This is another piece of drill rod that I have hardened a few minutes ago just before I did uh, this and I've got it held in the vise and I'm going to put this shield on and take this whopping big hammer and see if I can break it off to show you how brittle it is. So let's see what happens here. Well, one piece went flying. I probably never will find it. Now this piece is hard, but how do we prove that? Well, there are all kinds of methods of checking hardness. The Rockwell scale is the most common. I do not have that. That's a laboratory type of instrument. It's highly expensive, but it's simply forcing a little diamond into the metal to see how far it will go. But the file test is the most common. I don't know if you can hear the squeaky sound and that the file will not really cut into it. Okay, back to this now. I can't find the other piece and it will be found uh, when they have the auction down here in five to seven years and somebody will say, I wonder what that broken piece is. But see the crystallization there and how it just broke, broke off like a stick of hard candy. And when that happens, there can be shards of, of metal. So that's why I was wearing my face shield. But I hope you find this a little bit interesting. You've seen hardened steel uh, break before, but now the purpose of tempering is to reduce the hardness and increase the toughness. It's just that simple. You can tell the temperature of steel by the color. Now I used to have a paper chart by Temple, at least I can't find it today anyway, showing all of these colors, but if you go on the internet, and this is just on my pad here, uh, this is anvilfire.com, but I think I fun, found it under images of steel. So these are the tempering colors, and of course at 100 degrees there's no color. I hope this shows up okay. But as you get hotter here at 420, 430, it starts to turn a little bit yellow. And then uh, straw yellow here at 460, darker yellow at 480, yellow brown at 490. These are uh, Celsius temperatures over here. And then, uh, well, they call it spotted red brown at 510. This is fairly accurate depending on how good of eye you want. Now I'm going to arbitrarily choose to temper it at uh, around 530. Now this can be done on your kitchen oven which will go up to about 500. And you can see that when you get past 600 degrees the colors diminish until it goes back to being just uh, the color of gray steel. I'm going to attempt to show you these colors on this hot plate because they slowly come in. But if you're using a torch, they come in very quickly and sometimes so fast if you have a little residual heat that you will go over that temperature. Now when you're tempering, there are different quenching mediums. Some people say don't quench it at all. Just let it cool slowly. Turn the oven off, turn the hot plate off, whatever. Or if it's oil hardening, uh, in oil, but I, I believe I will quench this in water, but some may disagree that with that, but I'm going to uh, be in this temperature range here, and I will also attempt to prove this temperature here with this and my temple sticks. Let me talk about temple sticks. This is pretty interesting stuff. This is my laboratory plate. You've seen it in other videos. And I've already determined that that position there, number six, is about what I need. Now this is hotter than a pistol. See that spit dance? And using my Craftsman 1000 degree high temperature blah blah blah, Let's see what it says. It says that I'm at about 470 right now. 480. 
I don't really want it to go too much over that, but this has been on for about 15 minutes. It takes quite a while to heat up. Now let's talk about the temple sticks, and these are available in uh, many different temperatures. Uh, I don't know how many, may maybe a hundred. But the ones that I have here in my hand are 500 degrees Fahrenheit, 450 and 550. You've seen me use these before. Temple and other companies make this also in a liquid like nail polish and in pellets. You could lay the pellet on here, but essentially it's wax. But if we take the uh, the 450, oh, I can feel it melts. You can tell by the feel of it. Now on cold steel, it just feels like a crayon, a Crayola. It's not doing anything. But here, right away it melts and feels slippery. So it's at least at 450. Now let me get the, here's the 500. And that's melting, so it's at about 500. And here's the 550. Just barely there. So it's, it's in again. And I don't know how accurate this is because some say that if it's a shiny material it uh, reflects, but I'm approximately 500 degrees, okay? Pretty neat, huh? So those are different ways that you can do it. Now if you've got a good kitchen oven and a kitchen thermometer, you can just throw it in there. If your wife will let you, if she's not baking Christmas cookies. And by the way, it's 15 below here now in December of 2016 in northern Illinois. If you're in Florida, stay there. Here's a piece of cold steel. It's only about an eighth inch thick. Let's put it on there and watch the colors change. It'll take a moment. Several people got semi-mad when I suggested doing time-lapse. And if somebody helped me finally understand how to do it, and now I'm finding that a lot of people don't want it. But I thought it was kind of neat in other people's videos to see something done in time lapse. But I, I found out people don't want music. I don't want time lapse. At least the people that have contacted me. If I can point this at the steel, it's only at about 400 now. So let's watch if we can. On this plate is going to vary. It would probably be hotter here, wherever the coils are in there, than, than in other places. Same as your kitchen oven. Is, unless you got a convection oven, I think they are even. I'm getting sidetracked here. Can you see the straw color? And now a little bit of bluish or purple coloring starting to appear. This can be done with your torch. Here's the 450. Oh, we know it's at 450. Here's the 500. That feels like it's melting. And here's the 550. So it's, it's at least at 550. And the blue color is coming out. That's approximately where I want to stop it, take it off, and quench it, and then that color will remain on there. But if you get it too hot, the color, again, is going to go away. So this is pretty accurate. You compare that. Yep, this thing went to sleep on me. I don't want to burn my tablet. Okay. That's it. Now I'm going to temper the actual part. 
here I go and I want to put the flat part down I want to see the shiny part now the heat's going to have a, a, a little bit harder time coming up into that because uh, it, it's round and only the uh, so-called portion that is tangent to the plate is, is picking up the heat I could put a blanket over that a heat blanket, but it's, it's a, the blanket I've got that was just given to me recently is, is pretty large in size. All right, can you see the color starting to come in? Little variation in the color, but I'm going to stop it right there and quench it. A little purp more purple than what I wanted. And there it is, it is now tempered. It has removed some of the hardness, increased the toughness. Now I've got a real nice fit. Not that that is that critical, but I did have to go in there with a one thousandth over reamer. You could polish this down so it fits, but now that it's hardened, that's more difficult to do, and I want to retain that color, which I happen to think is pretty. So, now what I'm ready to do is to uh, look for a spring. Now, this is the original spring that came in this one. As mentioned before, it is a 3 8 diameter, and I gave you the dimensions at the beginning, and it is how long here but you can always cut a spring off it's one and a half long and you want it to be fairly stiff so look what I did I went to the hardware stores and let me talk about that I went to our local farm store called Farm and Fleet and they had a selection of springs and drawers but there were many empty bins and I believe that the bins that I was interested in were the empty ones because I couldn't find anything even close to what I wanted. So then I went to my own Ace Hardware store and I came around the corner looking for those wonderful steel cabinets that have been there since the 40s and uh, they were gone and replaced with an assortment of springs on hooks. I was devastated and you can see they're out of some of the popular ones here but I did find one and there it is they are 3 8 springs but it's you had to buy four of them well, I don't want four and it's three dollars and fifty nine cents so I went away empty-handed and broken-hearted. Now I do understand that these set on the shelf on the hooks for years without selling. The money is tied up so they have to charge an outrageous price to cover that. But uh, So that's where you may have to go unless you're in the mood for making a spring. But let, let me show you what I came up with. I think I've shown you this before but I have quite a large selection of springs that I've accumulated over the years. And in these drawers, I did find some that I can use. Take a look. After wasting 10 minutes out of my life, I came up with about six of them here that would be usable. This one way too strong, but it can be, or long, it can be cut to length. This one probably too, well that one might work, so that's the one I'm going to try. But you see there's several others there as well, this being the original. Then, I also had this selection here by Reed Tool and Supply. I don't know if they're still around, but these are supplied in a 10-inch length, so you just cut them off. So there's a possibility there. It's a little bit too small in diameter, but it would be usable. But I'm going to use, uh, try this one. Put it in there and see what happens. This one fit in there fine, but when I assembled it, she was a jammer. So I had to pull it out. It wasn't easy to get out. I used that hook. So uh, I think I'll use this one. It's, it's the right length, but it's a little bit uh, 
smaller in diameter and I put some oil on this. Let me tighten her down and see what it looks like. I don't think I'll get the Toledo scale out. Remember, I'm going to Loctite that because you don't want it to be uh, too tight. Okay, I believe that's going to be just right. Yes, that's it. A perfect fit. This is the original one. Now, if you still have any energy left, you could, in fact, take this before you harden it, of course, either on the other end or make a separate one with a little center hole dealy to hold this type tap. But upon measuring some of these, they aren't 60 degrees. This one, I think, was 90 degrees, and then there were some others that were at different angles, so that apparently is not a uh, universal angle. But, as I said, you could make one, make a hole on the end of this, and use it for that type. Now, I have so many taps, I very seldom run into that problem. In fact, I never have used this one. But that's an option for you. And I'm putting a singular drop of Loctite on there. You don't want so much that some of it leaks inside and then bonds the uh, pointer here into the body. So I got that adjusted just right. Well, that completes the build and the video itself. As an option, you can also put some bluing on the body here, like I did for uh, some of the other projects. Gun bluing I'm talking about, so that it matches this. I do like that rich purple blue color there. All tempered and ready to go. Chamfered. And looking pretty good, I think. So there it is. A tap follower, spring loaded. Make one for your shop. Hope you liked the video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now. And I will see you in my next video.